What was your favorite toy as a kid? I would say it was the He-Man、oh. Eternia set. I don't even know what that is. I mean, I know He-Man, but I still have all those in storage somewhere. So mine was this really obscure stuffed animal that I called Mushi, and it was a cat. And I think my grandfather gave it to me. And it was gross. It looked like a piece of rag. Like it didn't even. I don't. I think it had a face. So that's why I knew it was a cat. But it was so dingy and grimy and dirty. But I loved that thing, and it came with me everywhere. And I cried when I lost it. Really? Yeah. Not really a toy you play with. You didn't have Barbies or anything. No, I did have Barbies, but I was older, and I would talk to my Barbies all the time, and I would hold them up like this. I mean, I think you're crazy if you don't talk to Barbies. Yeah, toys. 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 Isn't there a Duran Duran song? Toys? No, boys. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Hit or Miss Hallmark Movie Reviews. I'm Daniela, and I'm John. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click the little bell to receive notifications every time we upload a new video. Welcome back to Christmas in July. Christmas in July continues, but we are winding down. I'm not winding down. I know, but W Network is winding down. Hallmark was supposed to be winding down, but now I think they're doing the whole month. That wasn't part of the original schedule, I don't think. I just don't think they updated their schedule quick enough. Yeah, maybe. And then maybe they got maybe. some pushback. Like, why is it? They do. Christmas all the、back. time. I mean, why isn't it Christmas? But、anymore? W Network up here in Canada was always the whole month of July, so we got them. We got it down.、Uh, anyway, tonight is the third and final premiere. We are reviewing Christmas, Christmas in, in Toyland. Toyland. Yes. What is this one about? When Charlie, played by Vanessa Lenghi's, a data analyst at a large toy store chain, learns the company is planning to transition the business exclusively online, she discovers one of their brick-and-mortar stores is outperforming the rest, and is sent there to investigate why. Charlie begins researching the one successful store to see what they do differently and present their model to the board of directors. While there, she meets Grant, played by Jesse Hutch. His passion and dedication to the store and to Chris. Christmas not only provides Charlie with data to save the stores, but also ignites a passion in her to live her dreams of becoming a toy designer. With Christmas approaching, Charlie and Grant's time together reminds them of the simple joys of the business they both love. As their feelings for each other grow, they are reminded that growing up doesn't mean losing your dreams. Bit of a long one there. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Sorry. Sorry. No, it's good. I wanted to kind of. Delve a little bit more deeper into the plot the of this one. <laughs> We do love toys. You want to slide down the slide? You want、That's、to run through the、dusted. candy cane gauntlet? There was a hallway with like swinging candy canes. The gauntlet. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah okay. So what did we think? I I mean I actually liked this movie quite a bit. It started off a little cheesy and kind of like it might have had some bad writing, but it quickly corrected and. Just turned into a standard feel-good, cute Hallmark Christmas movie. So when I was watching the advertisements for this, I initially was looking forward to it because I thought it would include a lot more like Christmas magic. I thought we were dealing with some sort of hidden toy room, or you know, like something where you, like you you go and your wishes come true, and there's like a secret Santa Claus there. I was hoping for a lot more Christmas magic. You mean like the magic wishing elf dust and the secret Santa chair that. They found in no, the but that wasn't、workshop. really like a secret. No, not it wasn't like this hidden kind of room that they discovered. It was, it was literally the way our plot. It was literally a hidden chair under a thing that she noticed. But you know what I mean? I don't know. I thought Toyland was gonna be like a magical place, like no, literally I, a magical I, place. I knew it was just gonna be a toy store. I was actually kind of、oh, impressed with how much they made a very obvious warehouse or whatever with some windows. Look like a toy store,、uh, you know. I still enjoyed this one. I thought it was enjoyable. Also, you know, I was looking forward to seeing Jesse Hutch because we like Jesse Hutch, and I've been waiting to see kind of like a, a big wig, a Hallmark big wig, in one of these premieres, and we finally have it. Yeah, he's big. He's a big enough wig. Well, I guess Kevin McGeary is a big wig too, and we did have him. Yeah. That was fun, but Jesse Hutch, I really liked. He did a really good job in this movie. I, I felt like he was that nostalgic toy store owner, and he was all about the kids, and it was it was just really sweet. Um, right off the bat, 
I did think that the writing was a bit off. I thought it was like too cheesy and felt a little bit forced, but it did start to get better and the pace started to pick up once she finally got to the store. Yeah. I think. I mean, right out of the gates, it was a little awkward and I was like, oh, this, I was like, oh, no. this might be really bad. It's going to be annoying. And, you, you know, know, after the first commercial break, I was like, okay, now I'm, I'm invested. Yeah. I mean, in terms of the story here, I, I don't think there's anything groundbreaking. I don't think the story is even that compelling, to be honest. So it really comes down to performances and direction, at least for me, than you are. So my attention was kept, I was engaged, especially with the more like tender romantic moments between Grant and Charlie. Um, but you know, I didn't love it. I just liked it and I, it was enjoyable. So why don't we talk about performances? So I wasn't actually very familiar with Vanessa. She has a familiar face, but I couldn't quite place her in anything that I've seen. And I guess when this movie started, I was actually not really liking her. I thought she was going to be too sickly sweet because, you know, her voice has a tendency to sound a bit squeaky. I think we need a Christmas tree. <laughs> like right here, picture it. Yeah, a bit mousy. Yeah, she definitely did the baby voice thing a few yeah. times. Where like, so I was oh. like, oh no, I don't think I'm gonna like this. I think I'm gonna be annoyed with her. But it actually wasn't over the top. No, no, not at all. Yeah. The setup with her and her work friend was kind of annoying. And that, you know, that yeah. was one of those hallmark tropes where it's like, oh yeah, the work friend that's just like super everything about you, you can take over the world, and like doesn't really care about herself at all. Yeah. Um, that was she a little got, annoying. But as soon better. as she was away from her, she got yeah. quite better. And quite honestly, I actually in, ended up enjoying her, her weird girly baby voice thing because it was starting to become sweet and cute. Well, yeah, because she, she was using it, was it in a way. towards Grant. You know, yeah, right? exactly. She yeah. was supposed to be this, you know, business forward data analyst. And when she would kind of break that character and be like, so about Jesse, it was actually really funny. It happened a few times. And yeah. I was like, she had this like doe eyed sort of gushing character to her face where it was like, you would just catch her looking at him or talking about him. I was like, oh, wow, they're really like, yeah. they built the chemistry more in her reactions to talking about him than them actually being on screen together. I think the standout for me though is is Jesse Hutch here. I, I just really like him and we kind of hit on this earlier, but he can kind of come off as this like too school for cool, too school, f no, <laughs> too, too cool, cool for, for school, school kind of guy, like too laid back kind of sarcastic, kind of stubborn and rude. Like I've seen him like that in other Hallmark movies. Yeah, but, but then, then he usually yeah. hits a point where it's yeah. like, okay, now I'm gonna like turn on the I care. There's button. a moment, there's either a line or the quickest look. And yet when he does it, and he does it in every movie, <laughs> it's like, oh wow, he's really human and sweet and vulnerable and I really like this guy. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like there's a few spots in this movie, you know, even when yeah. she comes in and sees him dressed as an elf, like giving all the kids like this Christmas dust. Uh, <laughs> it was cute. That was very yeah, cute. Yeah, it, it was very cute. And yeah. he had a lot of little points in this movie where it was like, oh. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I didn't. So why don't we get a little bit nitpicky here? I didn't really have too much nitpicky. I just really liked the candy cane hallway gauntlet thing. Yeah, I guess, I mean, that's definitely not nitpicky. No, not sure. I just liked it. And what about the set designers? The set here is, was great. I well, yeah, I thought, as, like I said before, I thought they I thought they turned that space into something that felt like a Christmas toy store. So let's talk about the writer and the director. So there's two writers here. We have Courtney McAllister. I remember her name. Yeah, some other writing credits include a Perfect match, in love by Christmas, I N N, so like an in, and learning to love again. <laughs> learning to love again. I remember that one too. That was good. The other writer here is Kate Pragnell. I remember her. So she has written It Takes a Christmas Village, Heart of the Holidays, and Riverfront Romance. The director here is Bill Corcoran. I don't know if I'm saying that right. He has a very extensive IMDb page. So he's been doing this for a really long time. So some other directing credits include Bad Influence, The Story of Love, which is uh, Brittany Bristow is in that one. Right. We like her. And The Christmas Temp. But the list goes on and on and on. So why don't we do uh, our Christmas meter? Let's bring in the walls. Um, so I'm going to give, what is this called? Christmas in Toyland, five golden rings. Oh, I thought you would have gone a little higher. You know, initially I was gonna. You gotta remember, go five's not the middle point. Five is lower. I know, fine. So this is on the shittier end. It's teetering end. six. It's teetering. That's fair. Five. 
But okay. you know, I, I I wasn't as taken by the story and the writing as you were. No, I wasn't taken by it. I just thought it delivered more than I thought it was going to deliver. Also, I had a totally different pre uh, view or pre expectation of what this was going to be, and unfortunately, that kind of tainted it for me. There was plenty of magic. All right. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give Christmas in Toyland seven swans a swimming. That's a good score. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you liked this. You liked this one. That was good. It's just just above the it was, middle of the room. You know, it was fun. It was sweet. It's definitely worth a watch. It's very light, and the performances are great. Yeah, I enjoyed them. Okay. okay, let's get to our Christmas list for All right. Christmas in Toyland. Okay, let's get to it. Mm -hmm. Christmas fake out. No. no. A Christmas party. Yes. At the end, they invite all the board of directors. Yeah, it's a fake ass party. Well, whatever, it was still a party. A character with a holiday name. No. Mm -hmm. uh, reference to picking out the perfect tree. Absolutely. Definitely. Ice skating. Nah. Santa makes an appearance. Yes. Character obsessed with Christmas. I'm gonna say yes. Yeah, we'll give it to him. Yeah, Jesse, I think. Well, Grant. I mean, yeah, to be that into the whole thing. Yeah. You have to be a little obsessed. A hot beverage. Yeah, yes. there was hot cocoa Several. in the store. Yeah, that was that's cool. Well done. The yeah. Christmas store should definitely have that for sure. Horse drawn sleigh. No. No. Nay. No. Nay. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Christmas in the title. Yes. Granted a Christmas wish. I mean. Yes. Okay, fine. The elf. I'm not does. letting you stomp the magic anymore. <sighs> okay. Is that better? It was definitely Christmas magic. Whatever. A snowball fight. I don't think so. No. Actually, there. Uh, this was not filmed during, during winter. <laughs> I didn't seem like it. Uh, Caroling. No. No Christmas caroling. Christmas magic, yes. Don't even talk. <sighs> okay, a mistletoe kiss. Nope. No. And digital or fake snow. I think you said you saw it once. I saw it twice, and it was very short, and it was right towards the end of the movie. So they didn't use it a lot, but it definitely was there. They're basically it never okay. outside in the movie. No, really, they're not. Such is life. Oh, my gosh. Wait, when they picked up the tree, were they outside? Oh, yeah, they were. Yeah. I don't think there was snow. I actually saw digital snow falling down right right at the end of the movie. She sees it everywhere. Yeah. My, my eye is out. Anyways, we enjoyed this one. And, it was know. enjoyable. It wasn't great. It wasn't like fantastic. This is a perfect mid middle of the road, yeah. hard to offend Christmas Yeah, for movie. sure. Christmas for sure. in easy. July movie. An easy watch. Don't yeah, expect quite. too much, but it was enjoyable anyway. Never expect too much. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, well, anyways, guys, let us know if you watched this premiere. Did it hit or miss the hallmark for you? Where did it fall on the Christmas meter for you? Yeah. Let us know, and we'll see you again very, very soon. Very soon. Until next episode. Bye. 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 Let's try again. Bye. Can we make them go over each other? Bye. <laughs>